You know, it's like maybe I'm this person when I'm at home and I'm this person when I'm at work. Oh, he's explaining like bubbles and masking and all the experiences. I'm different things, right? But all the experiences we are when we're in different bubbles. And I'm this person with my old timey street yep, gang. Yep. I'm all of these things at once. Oh, 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 fire, fire, fire. Oh, he's so good. Oh, this is it, baby. This is so true. We are all these things at once. And my identity and consciousness are constantly unfolding. Oh, oh, what he say? What he say? Consciousness? Brittany doesn't even know what a consciousness is. Science doesn't even know what a consciousness is. This is why we watch Wisecrack, because this man actually studies philosophy. Israel's war in Gaza is one of the most significant geopolitical events of the 21st century. So why is this guy one of the internet's leading commentators on the issue? Oh, that's an what? argument for incest I never considered. For those of you who missed it, death- Okay, we have a lot of feelings about her in this space, but that was a very old clip. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was a very old clip from Destiny, okay? Like, we have a lot of feelings about this girl. She's very misogynistic, horrible father, horrible partner, chronic cheater, useless as a human. But also, to be fair, that clip was from a very long time ago. But this one was very recent, so let's get into it. Destiny, who is a streamer, a debated political scientist and Israel-Palestine scholar, Norman Finkelstein. Uh, and in doing so, he presented himself as an expert on genocide. Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound oh, yeah, that they had operated from. Young, they literally Mr. did. You Morelli, can you can Mr. Google Morelli, it. With all Mr. Due respect, with all due respect, yeah. You're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. You know, later he went on and talked about... Now, I've heard Finkelstein is the destiny of that bubble. So I'm not sure that this wasn't a uh, uh, Borelli on Borelli crime, truly. So that's what I've heard about Finkelstein. I heard he's the destiny of their bubble. So just sounds like they should have made out instead of argued, but how he absolutely dominated that debate. If the other side doesn't bring up a single coherent point from the entire conversation, which they didn't, and they're like being unhinged the entire time, I feel like hopefully it plays better to me. I probably definitely could have gone um, I definitely could have gone harder though, given how unhinged Norm was. And in the most important election of our lifetime, why is Donald Trump doing a live stream with Aiden Ross? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even get through it. I couldn't even watch it. It was so boring. I actually think Trump killed it with Logan and Mike, but I couldn't handle the Aiden Ross conversation with Trump. But that was after um, Kamala Harris got the endorsements from like TikTok and was doing really well with the girlies and the gays and the theys. Which, of course, right, she's a queer icon, ultimately. Have you seen young Kamala Harris pictures? That's a bisexual queen right there. There's a pansexual queen right there. And for that matter, why is one of the most incisive voices on the left not a host at MSNBC or CNN, but a Twitch streamer? <laughs> You know, Hassan Piker's critiques of liberal policies from within his streaming suite at the DNC apparently got him kicked out. I, uh, mm, I think Hassan covered this on stream. It wasn't exactly that. It just people thought it was that. But I think he it, it was a little bit more like. Hey, we maybe maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, but I don't know if that's exactly right. Doubt that you know, NBC would be getting kicked out randomly. Which is cool. I'll be honest, guys. In general, it's cool to get kicked out of places. It's a cool badge of honor, unless you get kicked out for like a, a not good reason. Live streamers have become important. Oh, why did I just sort My Little Pony? Did you guys hear it? I feel like I'm hearing the My Little Pony theme song in my head all of a sudden, and I don't know why. My Little Pony, My Little Pony. I don't know why. It's. I just randomly thought about it enough in the political space that they can seemingly change minds, influence elections, and maybe even threaten major political parties. So how did folks like this go from streaming Grand Theft Auto 5 all day to reshaping our political discourse? And are they making a meaningful difference or just enabling a sort of digital cosplay that lets us feel like we're activists when we're just sort of fueling Jeff Bezos' empire? Mm. Jeff Bezos, worst bald man alive. Change my mind in the comments if you think there's a worse bald guy. To understand political streaming, we gotta start by contextualizing the seemingly unpolitical world of video game streaming. Because before mm. these guys were interviewing world leaders, most of them were just streaming um, Who's interviewed a world leader? I mean, I guess Aiden has technically, wow, Trump is a world, is Trump a world leader? Oh my God. Rip a Rooney. Rip, <laughs> as Destiny would say, Rip-a-Rooney. <laughs> what? 
Trump is a world leader. I'm gonna cry. Games oh. in their bedrooms. And they all started over on Twitch, which is an Amazon owned platform catering to gamers and their fans. And since Twitch took off, you know, some streamers have moved over to competitors like Kick and pathetic, gross, lame boomers continue to stream here on YouTube. Nice. I'm Michael Burns. I'm here with producer Henry. Now, one distinguishing aspect of streaming relative to other types of media is its shocking sense of immediacy. Now, streamers are playing and reacting in real time, and simultaneously, their viewers are commenting and maybe even critiquing them in the chat. Go to your Twitch dashboard and check out the new charity function. It makes easier for your chat to donate to charity and doesn't cost you anything. Okay, mm. I'm, I'm not doing that right now because we're in the middle of something right now. I don't know if you can tell, but what I'll do, thank you for letting me know, but all right. It's a format mm. that leads to heightened reactions and lots of hot takes. This might be the most transphobic thing that I've ever said in my life. So here we go. I don't think I really believe in non-binary. And unlike- Wow. Super brave, bro. Every centrist doesn't believe in non-binary. Every basic Democrat doesn't believe in non-binary. But let me tell you, don't need you to believe in it for it to be a real experience people are having. Like traditional media, YouTube videos or podcasts, when users react- By the way, Destiny did formally identify as non-binary, which I actually think is a part of his neurodivergency because a lot of neurodivergent people are having like a genderless experience. And when him and I were friendly, we talked about this and then he didn't identify as non-binary because he felt like it didn't make sense to him. But if you asked him if he strongly identifies with being a man, I think in the past he said no. So there's some, he went on a gender journey as well. But obviously, like, he is more centrist. I mean, he just went to Israel. You know what I mean? To, like, support Israel. So, like, we obviously know where he stands. He's not, like, he he doesn't want to be known as a progressive. So, obviously, he's going to move away from the non-binary talk, the gender talk. You know, he used to be, like, a progressive streamer. But obviously, that's not true. Like, ultimately, he is moving more towards a centrist perspective, which I think is deliberate from everything I've seen, um, which is, like, fair. But that's why I say be careful about these people who say they're progressive. Because how progressive are you really if you don't think gender is a construct? Act to or, you know, yell at streamers. Well, streamers can yell back, which offers a thrill and attention that's only available in such an immediate format. I mean, imagine if you could yell at Rachel Maddow and she could yell back and <laughs> call you a dirty little incel. Okay. <laughs> Step on me, mommy. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but this sense of immediacy isn't just fun or kind of thrilling. It actually has the potential to shift how we relate to each other on a societal level. <laughs> Scholar Yokai Benkler argues that social media democratizes communication by providing direct and unmediated access to information and discourse. As he sees it, digital networks allow for a genuine reorganization of the public sphere by weakening the power of commercial mass media and its owners and providing an avenue for diverse and politically mobilized communication that's less corruptible by money than traditional mass media. Now, in fairness, that was written in 2006 uh, before a world mm. where a bunch of cool countercultural. Okay, I don't even know who the middle person is, but these two are losers. Are you thinking streamers? Oh, like just a reminder for all of us to remember being queer doesn't mean you're a good person. Diddy's queer, as we know now, as we also always thought. And Dave Rubin is a gay man who's married to a husband. Okay? And. In my opinion, they're good people in their own bubbles from a philosophical sense. But being queer doesn't make you progressive. Destiny is also bisexual, for the record. So again, these ideas of these like queer people who like they don't strongly identify with their queerness in the same way. Like they don't understand. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like they are having a different relationship with being queer. But they are queer. You know what I'm saying? Like they are queer queer so just keep that in mind being queer doesn't mean you're safe being queer doesn't mean you're progressive being queer doesn't mean you believe in consent right like tim pool got paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by russians to say stuff on their streams not very cool and countercultural, is it timothy but i would say that if any of you if any of the russians are watching this seriously you know what I'm saying? Let's let's get involved. Let's do it. Let's do the thing. I would do it for so much less. Like, 
like a disgusting amount less. I, I, I saw how much you paid Tim Pool, one one thousandth of that, and I'll, I'll be here praising Putin. I'll get a Putin neck tattoo. Oh, I'll get a Putin lower back tattoo that says Tootin' for Putin. Stop. That will maybe jiggle Fired. when I fart. But Fired. shadowy sponsors aside, <laughs> For Benkler, the decentralization and democratization of information flow makes the public sphere more inclusive and participatory, providing a platform for non-market, peer-produced sources of filtration and accreditation. And this really helps alleviate information overload while also serving as a counterbalance to the concentrated power of traditional media. You can think about it this way, like the best things you've probably watched on the internet are because your friends were sharing them over and over or a Reddit community you're a part of told you to watch it, right? It's not because some, you know, traditional media source was like, please watch the new Connor O'Malley video. It's called Corey's and it's a weird exploration of the way our identity split under late capitalism and the way that social media exacerbates those tensions, right? That's hot. It was just your friend was like, check out the new O'Malley video, it's f***ing crazy. Now this all empowers viewers to contribute to public debate and hold those in power accountable. And in the context of political streaming- Oh my God, what is happening here? It's like, a, I can smell this room. I don't know what's happening, but I can smell it. That's all I know. This is the most neurodivergent group of humans I've ever looked at in my life and all of them smell. Viewers are able to form communities with other audience members that can exist. I'm sorry, that was mean. Kyla's sitting right there. Kyla doesn't smell, okay? I've decided. The only person in this room who doesn't smell is Kyla. Can you guys see her? She's right there, okay? I take it back. Ky Everybody smells but Kyla. That's what I've decided. In the chat on Discord servers and social media, or hey, even real life. And please let us know if you ever met a stream friend in real life. Also, if you met a stream friend in real life and you're currently you know, handcuffed to a radiator in their basement, but you can kind of reach the keyboard, I guess, type help and we'll, we'll, we'll try to find you. But it's not just immediacy and community that make political streaming so unique. Christopher J. Hopwood suggests that the ability of platforms like Twitch to enable the sharing of unfiltered thoughts and experiences in real time helps facilitate the expression of realness. This is the idea that, you know, streamers seem to have an authenticity that we don't normally mm. see in popular media figures. Hop ooh, 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 let me do this authenticity in quotation marks, huh? Wood and his co-authors argue that realness may be a particularly important individual difference variable within certain domains of social behavior. For instance, being real may be both harmful and beneficial for politicians, but for citizens, it is a key characteristic of trust. It's basically like, when streamers seem like like a cool person to hang out with, like how I'm a cool person to hang out with, you know? I, I trust him more intuitively than I would some good looking guy on TV. Ooh, I've met this man. He's the devil himself, let me tell you. I never felt like the devil himself had touched me my whole life until I shook this man's hand. And I was like, oh Jesus fuck, bro. This man knows Satan personally, okay? This man know Diddy himself. <laughs> <laughs> with a slick haircut and a nice suit and he always says the right thing, you know? Screw that guy. Now some of this is simply a function of streamers broadcasting for huge amounts of time. Seriously, if you're not familiar with this sort of thing, you know, Piker will stream for 12 hours a day. Destiny might stream for seven hours a, a day. Lot. People like Vosh might go five, six hours a day. And when you're streaming for, you know, most of your waking life, you're gonna have to talk about more than just politics and theory. Graveler is a rock with four arms and pass. I'm not putting my like anywhere pony. near gravel. My now it seems pony. like the relatability and realness is paying off. Piker alone has over 2 million and 500,000 followers and 140 million views with an average of 100. Chat, you better be high as shit right now. Weren't you the same username who was saying on Chapel Roan and then you write Vosh is my dilf? Vosh is your daddy? You'd like to. Ma'am, you better be your, get your priorities straight, girl. Get your priorities straight. Okay, that better be a joke. That better be a joke. 157,000 active viewers. I, I know for a fact that's over twice the population of Duluth, Minnesota. So at any point he's streaming, there are two Duluths watching him. Now, during the 2020 elections, his was the sixth most watched election coverage stream. He averaged a similar Whoa. audience size to CBS. Whoa. Look at, look at, there's Crowder, gross, and Hassan. Oh, wait, you can't see because my fucking, I am in the way. Hold on. Okay. Oh, wow. Good job, Brittany. Wow. You're so good at your job. This is why they pay you the big bucks. Okay. Why is my screen out of order? Has it been that way the whole time? Don't answer that question. Just tell me I'm perfect. Okay. So look at this. 
Hassan, 33. Okay, 2.49 million hours watched. Four nine. That's crazy. Minutes, not hour, minutes, hours. Okay, CBS, Steven Crowder, others, NBC. How is Steven Crowder the only other political streamer? 6%? That's kind of crazy, though, actually. Okay, okay, I'm hooked. I'm listening. Very interesting. And Fox News. And this seems to indicate that at least amongst... Whoa, hold on, chat. Why don't y'all like Vosh? Did you miss the whole CP folder arc? <laughs> Like, did you miss the last three years of 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 Vosh content? Did it, did you like miss the whole arc? I can't believe you would have missed it. It was pretty big on the internet. Everybody was talking about it. A younger demographic, folks prefer more interactive and authentic content. And this has not escaped the attention of mainstream media. You get more people watching you of an evening than I do. But all of this doesn't <laughs> answer the question of why we, you know, you, me, all our friends, are so engrossed by political streaming. And why millions of folks spend just hours and hours of their lives enmeshed in these digital worlds. Now, it might have less to do with how it changes our opinions and more to do with how it actually changes our experience of time. Yes, friends, that's a real thing I'm about to argue, so, so don't tune out now. Before we keep going, I wanted to give a shout out to our friends over at Yes Please mm, Coffee. Mm -hmm, They're special mm. because- I was telling my partner today, it's not the caffeine I want. It's the coffee. I just love coffee. Though we are moving into tea season, girls. Very exciting things. This is a company that I actually reached out to because I liked their coffee so much. I asked if they wanted to work with us, and thank God they did. Yay. Uh, they're based right here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. it's an independent mm -hmm. company. Their beans are awesome. I've been drinking Yes Please for a few months now, and it's some of the best coffee I've ever had. My good friend, producer Olivia, said it changed her relationship to coffee. A lot of people from our stream community have tried oh. it and loved it. Go to their website and then use the code WISECRACK for 20% off. Hey, There's 20% is pretty good, bro. A link down in the description as well. Truly top notch beans. It's a great way to support. True. Chess says, I heard a ton of streamers are enforcing the right for tons of money. Tana Mojo exposed it the other day. Yeah, Tana was approached. Some people were approached. I mean, it's not that abnormal. Apparently, she even said that it's happened kind of on both sides. But like, ultimately, it's not that abnormal for political candidates to hope for an endorsement to pay people to endorse. And so I think there's something that has there's definitely something at play there. But that's why you have to be very careful and Think for yourself to the best of your ability. Yes, listen to other people's opinions, but really you got to form yourself. And you are at the end of the day, the person voting. At the end of the day, the only person, you know, responsible for how you voted is you. But at the end of the day, you're also going to die. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. But also you can't rely on these political YouTubers. Like you can't look at these political streamers and think they'll tell me how to vote. They're not the ones who are supposed to tell you how to vote. You're the one who's supposed to come to a decision based off your values. Pick the candidate that most aligns with your values to the best of your ability and move the fuck on. The channel uh, and help support a really cool independent company. So check out Yes Please Coffee because, you know, I think you deserve it. Now let's get back to the show. It's clear that authenticity is critical to the success of political streaming, but mm. of course it's not just about being cool and relatable. Because some, some of these guys aren't cool or relatable. They're kind of weird and unrelatable. It's that the very structure of the medium creates moments of truthfulness in both the streamer and their audience that are almost impossible to achieve in other forms of digital media. Now we can better understand this via the work of French philosopher Henri Bergson and his concept of pure duration. Now for Bergson, duration is a way of thinking about time or a type of time which operates in distinction from clock time. You know, it's not mathematical or mechanical. Like I have a, a little watch right now and the second thing it's going 50, 51, 52, mm -hmm, 53, mm -hmm. right? Sequential, linear, mathematical, things of that nature. But duration is more to do with our experience of time. Imagine what it feels like to wait for 40, five minutes in the waiting room of your dentist. Mm. Feels like an eternity. Mm -hmm. Now imagine what it feels like to spend 45 minutes catching up with your best friend that you haven't seen in a while. It probably flies by and before you know it, they're on their way and you wish that you could hang out for longer. Same amount of, you know, linear time, but we experience it way differently. And we see this at play in the unique temporal experience of watching a live stream. Now, unlike mm. watching a cable news show, which is broken up into distinct segments and commercial breaks equaling precisely one hour. 
You know, streams can often go on for hours without any segment breaks or time constraints. Uh, to be clear, some streamers do uh, have sponsors or take little breaks to talk about that, but it's not quite the same as cutting away to, I don't know, some commercial about mesothelioma. How will mm. this affect my loved ones? But all of this creates a sense of flow that affects both the streamer and the audience. And in doing so, it can collapse the way that we think about and experience time. Now think about it this way, okay? You're pretty unlikely to get home from work and just say, now I'm gonna sit in front of a screen for five hours, watching a guy talk about politics, play some games, mm. say maybe maybe do some re Yeah, um, to be honest, I didn't really watch, and I don't really watch a lot of streamers for a long period of time during the day. Uh, but I do like background noise. So there's a select group of people that I watch in the background that I don't mind walking away from. You know, before the internet, I was a radio girl. I listened to radio all day. I called into radio stations all day. I loved rock stations. And when I was a kid, the Disney and then politics. And I just loved having the radio on. My parents always had the radio on in the house. Like we didn't have our TV on. You know how some people are TV people? Like my bestie's mom always has the TV on. Like sometimes all the TVs in all the rooms are always on. But my family was a radio family. We always had the radio on. And so for us, like it's just comfortable to come in and out of the house. Maybe you're sweeping one room and you go to another. I do the same thing with streamers. I kind of think of them as radio. Heck, I think of this as radio. Like it's really cool that some of you have like a schedule based around my stream, like Brittany streaming, it's like my routine. And I love that, like that. that's so cool because that was always my dream as a kid is I, I did wanna be someone's background noise. So like that's kind of the dream. And so there's something to that that's so lovely, but it also creates a feeling of knowing the person because you listen to them so much, right? And I felt that with radio hosts, I felt that with certain DJs on the radio where when they would leave or go to different radio stations, I maybe would follow them because it was their voice that I was looking forward to listening to every day. And then some people had like three hours a day they were on or an hour a day or they were part of my daily routine, my drive to work. If the radio station wasn't clear, I'd be so mad because I was like, hello, this is a part of my routine. And so it is kind of interesting that streaming does the same exact thing from a parasocial perspective, from a business perspective. And I think it's good more than it's bad as long as you have a good relationship with it. And if you'll notice, if you're like me, you'll notice certain usernames in certain communities. I will notice the same usernames in like five, six, seven communities. And they're in the chats during all the streams, which means like they're kind of in everyone's little bubble, which is so interesting too, because it begs the question of who are these chronically online people? How are they in everyone's chats? How are they having these relationships with everybody? And then how do they have the time, right? Because it's one thing to watch me during work. It's one thing to be in the chat all the time. It's one thing to be part, you know, everyone's a different kind of viewer. So it is, I find it fascinating. Research. Instead, you probably just tune into your favorite streamer. And then before you know it, you're caught up in the discussion. You're jumping in the chat. You're participating in an active way and, you know, then five hours have passed and, and holy crap, you have to be up for work soon. Mm -hmm. Now for Bergson. Sometimes even I don't want to go to sleep because I'm watching a stream and I want to know what's going to happen. Or sometimes I fall asleep to it. Hold on. Chat says, I remember Brittany saying she didn't know if Va what Vaj Va did was that bad because she wasn't sure what Lolly looked like. No, no, no. I know what Lolly looks like. I didn't know what his type of Lolly looked like because only two of those photos in that folder was Lolly. I did look at the folder because I'm a researcher. Okay, only two of the photos in that Vaj folder was actually Lolly, for the record. Because Lolly is specific, and this might be my neurodivergency, but I don't like miscategorizing things. And I'm very particular, but I know that it, the world has a hard time because it makes you sound like you're justifying it, right? Oh, okay, good, okay, chat, good job, good job. I said the Lolly look like, true, 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 okay. That's true, I wasn't sure. But I will say that Vosh is obviously very f***ed up. For the chat, I know you guys were talking in the chat. Like, Vosh is obviously very f***ed up. He's neurodivergent. He's autistic. He's got a weird issue with boundaries. But this, again, is why not all people with autism are the same. People aren't a monolith. Like, everybody is so unique. It's not your autism. There's a difference between being sympathetic and an excuse. There's, like, there's a difference between helping humanity and just ignoring it. Guys, if you want to help humanity, if you're the group of people that say, I want to help people, who do you think needs the help? Vosh. Now, do you want to help Vosh? No. Do I want to help Vosh? No. Does he need help? Oh, desperately. So much. I'm not going to do it, though. So, 
We need somebody else to do it, but does he need help? Oh, yes. It's easy to say you want to help when it's an easy problem. But let me tell you this. It's also not bad not to help Avash because I ain't going to do it either, girl. I ain't going to do it either. You know what I'm saying? Like, good luck, girl. Hope you drown. Like, <laughs> Just kidding. I hope you get better. I'm really rooting for everybody. I'm, I'm really rooting for humanity. Exactly. We do not answer Vosh DMs. Okay. Drake, Diddy, Vosh, you do not answer those DMs. Okay. You ignore the DMs. Okay. We ignore those. We ignore those DMs. Also, guys, I really, you know, as much as I plan to get bigger as a content creator, and I really do want to, I also want to keep this chat as reasonable as possible. I don't really like people who joke too much about liking predators. Like there's one thing to be sarcastic some of the time, but if I see the pattern too much, like you're trying to get attention, I will block you. And I don't unblock people once I block them. So tread lightly, tread lightly, okay? This dissolution of clock time creates the space for pure duration, where we're purely in the moment, fully experiencing our own internal lives. Now, Bergson unfortunately died way before you could watch H Bomber Guy stream Donkey Kong 64 mm. for 57 hours straight, but you know, he may be considerate in terms of music. Donkey Kong is my favorite. Now, music does follow a specific temporal structure, right? It conforms to a certain clock time. Maybe a song is in 4-4 four, four at 110 beats per minute. But when you're caught up in a song that you love, your experience is one of pure duration. You know, you're not thinking about measures and time signatures. You're just fully in it. This is why deadheads can vibe out to a song for like 45 minutes and then want more as soon as it ends. You know, because when that music never stops, you sort of feel free mm, from everything mm, else. Mm, mm, mm. This feeling of temporal freedom is the exception to the rule of our normal lives, which, let's be honest, are mostly governed by clock time and more specifically work time mm. or, or work clock time. Oh, I have a podcast coming up about uh, coming up about this. I remember a time in my life when I would just like beg for work to be over or beg for a weekend or I would dread like a Monday and I am just so grateful that I did so much of the f***ing work and I had so many great opportunities to get myself better so I wouldn't have to be this person anymore. But the way I would look at the clock, the way I would beg the clock to move faster so I could go the f home and stop socializing and not be at work. Oh, my God. It was like you would. Oh, oh, girl. Now, as Bergson writes, we spend the majority of our lives outside ourselves, hardly perceiving anything of ourselves but our own ghost. He goes on to write that we live for the external world rather than for ourselves. We speak rather than we think. We are mm. acted rather than act ourselves. This means that our identities and our internal states of consciousness are shaped by rigid clock time. Like, do you know what I'm, like, oh, 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 I feel so, oh, I feel so liberated listening to philosophy channels that actually know what they're talking about. Oh my God. Oh, oof, I love it. Yes, yes. Doesn't, oh, this hits like an orgasm, bro. This is so good, it's so good. Holding. And streamers are able to tap into this, you know, creating an experience of duration in which different elements of their consciousness <sighs> or perspective emerge over time. You know, think about the stream marathons of someone Yo, like- Yo, Ludwig's hair looking so good, bro. Bro. Chat says, did you change, did the ch you change the perspective or a job change helped? Well, there, that's both, right? I, I, it's both. Ultimately, I've been doing YouTube for like 10 plus years, never could do it full time, never was mentally healthy enough, never was self-aware enough, never knew a bubble I belonged to. I never, you know, I never knew myself. Now, obviously the perspective had to change on YouTube and I had to change jobs, but I was always doing YouTube. Out of high school, my dad was like, you should do YouTube for a job. Out of high school, my dad supported me in doing YouTube for a job. He, he was gonna, you know, he wanted me to be like a different kind of YouTuber, but still he never ever, said I couldn't be a YouTuber. My mom, they were both supportive of me being a YouTuber, right? So I think for me though, I could never actually make it my full-time dream, my full-time job until I could get mentally better and I changed my perspectives and I was introspective. Like it didn't matter how many opportunities I had with YouTube along the way, I could never sustain it because I was always 
my perspective was just wrong. My perspective wasn't working. I wasn't in my joy. So once I had a perspective shift and I was in my joy, I could do it for real, for real. You know, I could do it for real. And now look at me, I'm doing it for real. You know, I'm a few years in full time. I'm successful. I feel really good about where my career is going, but it also, it was me. I was the problem. It wasn't my job. It was me. If I was meant to be something else, I would have been great at that too. But I was obviously meant to be this thing. This is the thing that makes me joyful every day. makes me so excited to come to work. And I don't care how many hours a day I get to do it. Like I, I hope to do it. I, if I could stay up longer than 14 hours a day, I would do it. I just can't. Damn fibromyalgia. Like damn illness. But like, you know, I would do this all day. It's just like the greatest thing in the whole world for me, you know, but yeah, I'm really lucky. My parents supported my dreams. My parents are very, you know, they're the immigrants that said you came to America, you can do whatever you want. You know, like that's, what's beautiful. And so I'm really lucky in that way. Like I, I know that in itself is a privilege. I could have had different kinds of parents who said like, this is stupid. You'll never be a YouTuber. But like, no, my parents till this day support my job. Ludwig, where dramatic variations in his behavior can create a palpable sense of authenticity. You know, sometimes even a streamer's mistakes or, or lapses in judgment or random asides, you know, make them feel most real to us. True. Talk to a on that phobia. You know, take this time that Hassan Piker, seemingly forgetting that he was streaming, got oh. a little bit distracted. That was my inside voice that came out. I was trying to fucking stop myself. But the sort of realness that emerges via duration doesn't just lead to personal details or accidental bro behavior. It also creates a particular experience for us, mm. the audience. One in which I am actively listening and engaging and experiencing myself thinking in real time. You know, when this is happening, it can feel like my identity is unfolding in dialogue with both the streamer I'm watching and the community mm -hmm. that I'm engaging with. Mm -hmm. This can all create the conditions for the political streamer to truly guide the audience when dealing with tricky or contentious issues and policies. And when they do this, they might help the audience see past rhetorical traps and empty platitudes, ideally creating the feeling that you're learning alongside your favorite streamer. And the authenticity of the medium mixed with the freedom of duration can then lower our guards. Mm -hmm. And that makes us maybe more likely to reconsider our opinions or remain open to ideas we don't immediately agree with. Ugh, you know what? This is so f true. He's so good, bro. This is such a good video. And this is so true. Even recently, shout out to all the new people joining the community. I really appreciate you being here. I mean, it's, it's really a thrill, but also I think I love when I get questions from the audience that are like, hey, Brittany, your work like really made me recontextualize my life. Like I've never heard someone say something the way you said it and a light bulb went off. Like that's the fucking goal, bro. Because that's how I feel when someone says something and my brain goes duk, 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 and I feel like, oh, shit. like all those questions I had just got answered because someone said it in just the right way for it to hit my brain and a way that made me go, yes, that's what I've been looking for. I just had this bubble pop moment where this perspective I was stuck on got popped. And now I'm able to have a better perspective. And that is the best feeling in the world. The best feeling in the world to me is popping that perspective and gaining a better perspective. And so I think that's why I love philosophy because philosophy really is about wonderment. It's about curiosity and openness. It really is about actually looking for the answers. It's why sometimes I always, you know, I'm more and more, the more I get to know myself, everything starts to make so much more sense when you realize like, man, you really never really fit in. Even when you thought you fit in, you never really fit in. And there's something about that that is so powerful when you know you're an open, curious, and interested person. Like not interesting, but interested. Like I'm interested in other people. I am interested. You wanna talk about neurodivergency? I'm the neurodivergency that likes people. And I just wanna know everything about people and what it means to be alive. Like I was having a conversation with a neurodivergent friend the other day and we were talking about how you exist outside of your skin color and out of your orientation and they kept reverting to the same argument their brain wanted to go to, which is like, yes, but because of other people, we are not more than that. And I was like, I know, but if you, but you are more than that because you are not what people perceive you as. You are a part of what people perceive you as, like he was saying, but you also are somebody else. You're something else. So yes, of course, we're mad at Chapel Roan for not voting a certain way when we think Chapel Roan is saying something about us. She's not saying anything about us. She's saying something about herself. It's where she is on the journey. It's what she's going through. It's how she feels she's doing the best for humanity. It's what she feels is best. And even though we disagree that it's maybe the best, 
it's not for us to disagree on her lived experience in the same way it's not up to me to tell you that like you should go vote or shouldn't vote. Like you should do what makes sense within your joy. You should do the thing that makes sense within your brain. And then if it comes head to head with somebody else's perspective, like Chapel Roan did with you guys or whoever, like that is an opportunity for growth. That's the perspective opportunity. But maybe you're more wrong than you think you are, or maybe you're more right than you think you are. And this is why there's that like dance of, are you actually interested in knowing if you're right or wrong? Or are you just interested in pointing out that somebody else is wrong? And it's really hard, you know? It's really hard. That might sound like I'm being too gracious, but I've seen this a little bit on our tiny little YouTube streams where people in the chat kind of open their minds, debate with each other, change their minds on stuff. It's, it's a very beautiful thing to see. Other times they just say, this channel fell off. Why is he here? Now we can see some of this in Piker's analysis of a debate between Ben Shapiro and Malcolm Nance, in which you know the audience gets all the benefits of having a political commentator who can translate, add context, and fact check in real time. This enhances the audience's understanding and equips them to critically engage for themselves. Okay. It's actually pretty simple. And it's not just that political streamers are able to offer us more honest and authentic analysis than traditional news media. They also have a pretty dialectical relationship with their audiences, you know, participating in an open back and forth that mm -hmm. can shift the conversation or lead to digressions and insights that a streamer maybe wouldn't arrive at on their own. Yep, you and me, girl, you and me. The duration of these streams and the communities they engender really do open up new types of interaction between host and audience. One where, unlike most experiences of our media consumption, you feel like being in the audience actually matters. You know, we see this in an instance like Piker responding to his audience when they had concerns about the rise of anti-woke rhetoric. It's no longer going to be irrelevant when that's all you can talk about in the next four years. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. The unique temporal nature of political streaming might then be one of the reasons that it creates such impassioned communities, which mm. is all well and good. But if you're like me, you might still be a little skeptical of the actual political efficacy of any mm. of this, you know, because sure, political streamers draw audiences as large as traditional news outlets, but are they as politically influential? Now, this question feels especially- Ugh, Tucker Carlson's face, bro relevant when we know that networks like fox news and cnn or, or podcasts like actually it's not his face it's his facial expressions god save america have exhibited mm. the power to inf wow is po oh my god i remember when pod save america because you know my friends and i all grew up political my parents were very political they encouraged us to be political <laughs> and pod save america was like the pod and like that's so funny i haven't like looked into their stuff in years i don't even know what they're doing anymore influence voters here the thing that makes streaming so interesting on a theoretical level you know that the temporality that comes through an experience of duration might actually be the problem by keeping folks locked into a consumptive trance it's arguably doing the opposite of facilitating offline political activism. Which raises the question, you know, are we too busy watching political streams to actually participate in politics? Mm, well, maybe interesting. But also remember, and this is what's so crazy, is a majority of eligible voters don't vote. Right? So it's and it's always been that way. So certainly not streaming, that's the issue. It's people's ability to go out and vote, how convenient it is. Like my partner. Uh, asked me because we had a Croatian election happen recently and you know his parents went and voted and stuff and they get the day off like you get the day off to go vote and he asked me do Americans do that and I said no he's like Americans don't get the day off to go vote and I said no and he's like well what that's stupid why and I was like because I guess if everyone got the day off like Somebody has to work, I suppose. Like, this is this is why we should have, like, a five-day voting thing and have shifts for everybody. But, you know, like, there, there are just things that are so funny about America. It could function so much better. But I know it's a large country, and I know there are a lot of problems, and it's pretty good for what it is. But damn. Damn. True, Michelle says there is early voting. That is true. That is true. And also getting people involved or knowing how to read a ballot. Honestly, it is a lot of work, you know, in a world where people are just trying to pay for their groceries. But, you know, 
Oh, wait. Alex says you can request unpaid time off. That's supposed to be an unpunishable, but it's a, such a hassle. Ugh. You know, convenience is a big part of American... Uh, America, a big part of America is like convenience levels. That's why we're all in debt. That's why America is in debt as a collective because they would rather spend a surplus of $25 getting Uber Eats than making the food themselves. It's so funny. Like America wants to be the most hardworking country in the world, but also overpays for Uber Eats. No judgment. Maybe not, because recently we have seen more and more streams. Sorry, on that note, I saw the funniest TikTok that was like, Nara Smith, I made it from scratch. People in the Balkans, you mean like every day? It was like a joke because obviously, like most people are making their food from scratch, right? Like we make our food at home. You maybe grow some vegetables. Maybe you like, but like Nara Smith making a whole business on making food from scratch, which is just making food at home to some extent is the funniest thing making bagels at home you mean like normal you know it's just it's a little funny it's a little funny and as a person who grew up with a dad who's obviously like adhd or something who every week was like i'm gonna make gum i'm gonna make ice cream i'm gonna make this i'm like uh-huh i grew up with parents that experimented with food my whole life so like they're very much like let's make it and they, let's make it at home my parents think it's like a big deal to make things at home because that's how they grew up in iraq like, my mom grew up without electricity. You make it at home, girl. Okay. Streamers step out of their bedrooms and engage in on-the-ground reporting that connects their streaming work to political action, while also offering more immediate and authentic coverage than what we might find on the evening news. And, you know, all of this is, of course, made easier by the relative accessibility and affordability of streaming technology. Now, we see this whether it's Hassan Piker visiting a campus protest at UCLA or Destiny visiting Israel. These on the ground reactions to current political events, you know, highlighted especially in the coverage. See, this is the difference between the two. One went to a Palestine protest and one went to Israel. Did, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure what the point of going Israel was. I don't watch Destiny, so I don't know. But like, when you hear that, it's like, oh, that's interesting branding decisions. But that's why I say like, he's not a progressive in that sense. You know what I mean? Not that you have to be pro-Palestine to be progressive, but I mean a little bit, kind of. Because you're, go you're going with the underdog. Like, just a reminder that Israel isn't the underdog in this conflict. Right? Like, they're not the underdog, so. Ongoing campus protests against Israel's war in Gaza are especially impactful during a time when it really does feel like there's a growing information vacuum. Whether it's you know, the defunding of newsrooms across America or the seeming untamability. Honestly, okay, here's one of the dilemmas with the way, because I loved getting a newspaper as a kid and I loved reading the daily newspaper. One of the dilemmas I find as a millennial who is more than happy to spend her money in different ways is how inconvenient I think it is to pay a dollar for all of these things. It is inconvenient to be a part of 10 different news sites and pay a dollar for each of them. It feels very insecure. And I almost wish news sites worked like streaming sites where I could kind of get them all in one place. That That is something I would pay for. If you could get it where instead of having to pay for each individual site and get on every individual site's website and then worry about my payment plan and updating my card, if you could get all of the news, all of the news people on one site, I would pay for that site. And I would pay $25 a month. Like I would. I would pay... I would join and I would read all of the articles in one go-to place. Because the thing that exhausts me is like, I'm not going to every single one of your fucking websites. The of fake news, it's all led to an overall decline in the quality of and our trust in traditional news sources. As Palmer, Toff, and Nielsen argue, when the public view the media as less trustworthy than politicians, it becomes easier for populist figures. Oh, hold on. Chad says he went to Israel to talk about the permanent, 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 Cream, hmm, where it's historians on the 100 year history of the conflict, Brittany. Now you still need to hear what you could get on Twitter. Okay. But you must know how weird that looks to go to Israel to hear from Israelis about the conflict. Chad says, I think he also went to the West Bank too. That's great. I didn't see any of that. No one talked about it. So, like, we should probably get that going. But, like, you know, it's hard because it sends a weird message. But also, I get it. And look, again, my perspective, you can disagree. This is the point. Like, I don't care if you guys disagree, okay? 
But it is one of those things where everyone is looking for a very particular way to tell a story. And the story from Israel's perspective, like, is not my, it's not interesting to me. But also, like, again, this conflict, I've already talked about it before. It's about what's good for humanity, not politics. Politics is different, okay? Politics is a very different game. It's also fine if people are pro-Israel or pro-Palestine, but it just... It's interesting and it tells me a lot about, from your perspective, what you're thinking. Is ...to lump the news media into a group with political and economic elites and claim for themselves the role of public defender. And for younger folks who have come of age in this era of distrust, streaming seems like a viable alternative mm. for a number of reasons, especially as it continues to enter the real world. Now, one of them is that it's unfiltered and instantaneous pony, nature allows viewers pony. to witness events as they unfold in real time which facilitates trust while also minimizing the potential manipulation we might associate with edited news broadcast. Another is that when streamers are reporting from the field, they're normally gonna center the perspectives of regular people actively participating in the event rather than highly paid experts. Mm -hmm. Chat, you're doing this weird bubble thing. Brittany, is UCLA's opinions more important than Israel scholars? Is a streamer's opinion more important than who? It doesn't matter. You're coming from a different perspective. That's all you're doing. Like, that's all you're doing. It doesn't matter. No one's more important than anyone else. You having this idea that like, oh, Israel's opinion is more important than UCLA's opinion is more important than only from your perspective. So which perspective are you talking about? From my perspective, they're all differently, uniquely important from their own perspectives. American citizens don't want to put taxpayer dollars towards funding a genocide. Israelis want a place to be safe. And Palestinians don't want to be killed anymore. All are valuable. All are valid. Don't argue in my comment sections at me like you know who I am. Okay? Don't bring your two bubble arguments to my chat. For fuck's sake. Or pundits typically featured on mainstream news shows. You know, as someone who was personally watching both streams from the UCLA protest earlier this year, and then also watching local LA news, I'll simply say that we saw two pretty different perspectives on what was happening. Pro-Palestinian activists in this barricaded encampment refusing an order to disperse. Peaceful protest, peaceful protest. And the efficacy of these sorts of streams has definitely caught the attention of politicians who want to speak directly to younger voters. You know, at the end of the 2020 election season, Congresswomen Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilan Omar jumped on... Okay, hold on. Chat wants to argue with me, which I love. It's turning me on a little bit. Listen, you said you criticized Destiny going to Israel, not Hassan going to UCLA. Because from my personal opinion, as a progressive thinker, I am not concerned with Israel's perspective. I think I understand it already. So for a big streamer to spend time in Israel, to go to Israel, to do a meetup in Israel, okay, is a decision to make when we already know what's going on, okay? UCLA is a different bubble and Palestinians are a different bubble. Brittany's personal opinion is I don't care what Israel has to say. I've heard enough. We All we get is Israel's perspective. All you're seeing in the mainstream news is Israel's perspective. That's it. I already know. I hear it every day. Every single fucking thing I see. We know. If you've been watching any of the news coverage of Palestinians, I'd love to see that more. And also, don't forget, okay, that regardless of how you feel about the situation, we all are coming from a personal perspective on it. And obviously, my heart is always with the underdog. Almost always. Okay? So, peace to Israel, but I already know your stance. Netanyahu has made that clear organize a get out the vote stream with a variety of popular streamers politically minded and otherwise they played the then popular multiplayer game among us and they had over half a million people most of whom were of early voting age who were there to watch and ask questions about the candidates and policies in a way that felt a lot more authentic and casual than a press conference or even a real town hall imagine showing up to the doctor and just saying you need help and getting it. You know, more recently at the 2024 DNC, Hassan Piker was on location streaming until he maybe got kicked out. And of course, politicians on the right have also been attempting to use streaming as a way to get out their messages. As in Trump's aforementioned appearance on Aiden Ross's stream, in which Ross, I guess, gifted Trump a Rolex and a Cybertruck. I can't imagine Donald Trump driving a car. Can he drive a car? Is there a video of him driving? I've seen him on a golf cart, not a car. If you have video of him driving a car, send it to us. I don't think he can drive a car. And in 2022, GOP rep Matt Gates live streamed on Twitch. And hey, if you didn't see it, um, it did not go 
super well. You know, while my streaming numbers are not amazing, I consistently dominate Matt Gates, which is something. So if the revolution won't be televised, will it at least be streamed? Friends, it's hard to say, but it is worth noting that it's not all good vibes and egalitarian spirit in the world of political streaming. There's a bunch of stuff we didn't include in this video, mm. to be very honest with you, because a lot of the right wing streaming folks that are popular very much are, are, are little Nazis. And we didn't want to put little Nazis in the video. <laughs> Mayamo. Now, plenty of folks who are out there use their platforms to just reinforce the status quo while cultivating audiences that are more sycophantic than curious. But on a personal level, during my experience streaming here on YouTube, I've really gotten to see how quickly communities of open-minded and empathetic and weird people can form. And then how these communities can be used to facilitate spaces of critical thinking about what's going on in the world. Special shout out to all the Wisecrack live heads out there. I really like you all very much. Thanks for hanging out with me every week. Um, I also do want to give a shout out to Garrett Cooper. Now he helped us with this video and he recently finished a whole PhD project on Ooh. political streaming. Uh, he shared some of that research with us. He helped out with mm -hmm. this. And if you want to learn more about Garrett and his work, um, tune in to our stream on Wednesday, and we're gonna have him on to talk about his project and more about streaming. And in general, if you've ever wanted to check out one of our streams, we stream every Monday and every Wednesday. Okay, I'm gonna like it. I don't even know why I'm not subscribed. I swear to God I was, what the F? This is Wisecrack, okay? So chat, let's go to the 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 chat, the comments. Um, Let's see. Real talk, the craziest thing about the Russia tenant thing is that they all started paying Tim Pool 400k a month just to keep doing what he was already doing. It wasn't even, let's turn this guy into an asset. It was, hey, this guy's talking like an asset. Maybe we should pay him so he doesn't change his mind. <laughs> Woo, that's funny. The Majority Report is a great example of a show that began a bit more traditional sense and has morphed into one of the best daily streams. Yeah, it's interesting because I used to watch all of these things consistently all the time. And of course, you guys know, like, this is a channel that's focused on acknowledging political bubbles, knowing they're a real thing for people, but also you are more than politics. Like, this is why I love philosophy, because you exist outside of the political spectrum. And politics, though important to our daily life, so important, isn't even something humans participate in as a whole. So it's kind of interesting the way we have these conversations. But you know what you do participate in every day as a whole? Your life. You exist outside of politics. You do not have to engage in politics to engage in your life. You exist outside of these things, okay? So let's see. Um, we don't want to put little Nazis in our video. Cuts to Aiden Ross. Okay, relax. Relax, okay? I really feel like, man, the world, this is why humans are so cute and so amazing as like a little species that's evolved over time, is we don't even understand the power of language. Like it's so powerful language. And we don't even think, you think Aiden Ross is a Nazi? Like Aiden, the Jewish guy? Like again, not that Jews aren't Nazi-like sometimes in Israel's political policies, but that's different, right? That's like a different thing. So it's kind of like interesting the way we use words and I love it. You know, I really do love it. What did somebody, like, anyways, humans are gonna human. We love to see it. Regardless of what these people are doing, don't let it dictate what you're doing in terms of your joy. Play the game. Play good offense, okay? <laughs> Play a little defense. <laughs> but don't let these people, you know, really ruin your day. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then